This uh, video is in reply to some issues brought up regarding Jirup's uh, video response on um, Eden's talking serpent, or why is there a talking serpent in the Garden of Eden. And I wish to address some issues here which uh, do not appear to have been uh, thought of or raised by the various video responses uh, that Jirup's uh, video uh, received from other YouTubers. Professional scholars uh, with PhDs in the study of the Mesopotamian ancient religion and its beliefs and concepts as well as the Bible uh, have suggested for over a hundred years that perhaps Eden's serpent is a recasting of some uh, fictional or mythological protagonist in some ancient Mesopotamian myth. And uh, so following that line of inquiry they studied the myths trying to figure out uh, what uh, myth has a story about man losing on a chance to obtain immortality for himself and for mankind. They eventually found a myth that met some of the requirements. Uh, it's called Adapa and the South Wind. And this was first unearthed in Tel El Amarna in Egypt about 1889 by German archaeologists. Tel El Marna was the capital of Pharaoh Akhenaten, the heretic pharaoh that tried to have one god worship the Aten. Anyhow, uh, a number of scholars from 1890 through oh, up until modern times, the year 2009, have proposed that the Hebrews took motifs from the Adapa myth and recast them into the story of Adam losing out on a chance to obtain immortality. So we want to investigate this myth and note uh, how it relates to the concept of a walking, talking serpent being held responsible for Adam's loss of immortality, at least in part uh, his loss of immortality. The, uh, the main character is Adapa, who is a apparently a priest of some sort who has several functions. He lives in ancient Sumer, modern Iraq, and uh, he does the cooking as a baker at the temple of his god Ea, who also in Sumerian would be called Enki, in a location called Eridu, which is about 12 miles uh, southwest of Ur of the Chaldees, where Abraham lived. Now, Adapa, besides being a baker, making food for his god to eat, also presents him fresh water every day and catches fish for him. According to the story, one day Adapa is fishing in the nearby freshwater lake at Eridu. A wind comes up, throws him into the water, and he curses the wind, breaking its wing. With a broken wing, the wind stops and eventually the situation is called to the attention of Anu, a god, a supreme god living up in heaven. He summons Adapa up to heaven to find out where did you get this power from to overpower a lesser god and stop the winds. So before Adapa goes up to heaven, his god Ea warns him, they're going to offer you bread of death and water of death when you get there. Don't consume these items or you will die. So Adapa goes up to heaven, is met by some gate guards who uh, admit him to the supreme god Anu. Anu discovers in disbelief that Adapa's ability to curse the south wind and break its wing was given him by his god Ea. In other words, Ea has given Adapa, godly, forbidden knowledge, how to curse and overpower the forces of nature in the form of a wind. 
Anu makes an interesting uh, decision here. Realizing that Adapa now has godly forbidden knowledge, he decides, well, I might as well make him a full-fledged god. So he summons the bread of life and the water of life for Adapa to consume. And through this consumption, he will become immortal like a god. Well, Adapa, on the basis of the advice given to him by his god Ea in Eridu on the earth, refuses the water and the bread. Whereby Anu decides, okay, you're not going to eat this stuff and drink it, then uh, away with you. And he orders his guards to remove Adapa from his presence and return him back to the earth in Eridu. So the conclusion of the story is that man once upon a time in the Mesopotamian concepts had an opportunity by eating something a magical food to obtain immortality for himself and for all of mankind he refused to eat the forbidden food the food forbidden him by his god Ea and because he obeyed his god he lost out on a chance to obtain immortality if he had disobeyed and eaten the food he would have gotten immortality for himself and mankind. So the the storyline in the Mesopotamian myth is almost a 180 degree about face according to what's preserved in Genesis. In Genesis man eats the forbidden food and is denied immortality. Another concept here that is is an about face is that Anu realizing that the forbidden knowledge that Adapa has on how to curse winds does not decide to throw Adapa out on his ear. Instead, he concludes, if he's got forbidden knowledge, I'll go ahead and give him full immortality and he'll be like a, a full-fledged god. And of course, the uh, story about Eden is that because man has forbidden knowledge, he is denied immortality. So it appears that what the Hebrews are doing here is they are making 180 degree inversions of the Mesopotamian account of why man does not have immortality and the issue of obtaining forbidden knowledge, godly forbidden knowledge. The Mesopotamian story of Adapa is interesting also in that it's quite clear that the gods really didn't care about man. Uh, Adapa is presented as being a faithful, scrupulous servant of Ea, and there's no blame to be found in him. I suspect this concept of no blame for Adapa is, was reworked as Adam originally being without blame until he uh, disobeyed and ate the forbidden fruit. But you have to remember, Adapa did not disobey, he refused to eat the forbidden fruit knowing that he would die if, if he did eat it. So there are a, a series of inversions occurring here as the Hebrews are reworking the Mesopotamian account as to why man does not have knowledge and why, or should say have forbidden knowledge and why uh, he is denied immortality. Now interestingly enough uh, before Adapa is removed from Anu's presence in heaven by Anu's guards. Anu gives him a change of clothing. And in the Eden account, God gives Adam a change of clothing before he expels him from the garden. So it's understood that the motifs associated with Eden's god, Yahweh, were originally in the Adapa story associated with Anu in heaven and Ea in Eridu. So two gods have been fused together and recast as Yahweh. In the Garden of Eden, where man was told, do not eat or you will die, was originally the Garden of Eden at Eridu in Sumer, where he had told Adapa, don't eat when you go to heaven. So two locations, an earthly Eden at Eridu, and the heavenly Eden of Anus have infused together and recast as the Garden of Eden story. So 